Hello everyone, we will continue the topic web time pro a back and in the previous video we started with concept of translation in web time pro a back and we covered that we should never hard code the text labels into a particular language whenever we will do the hard coding we will never able to do the translation so what we will do we will go for various translation methods whenever we will use those methods it is very easy to translate into multiple languages so what are those translation methods so total we will cover three translation methods so what is the first translation method we use that text which is defined in that data dictionary we all know sc11 is the transaction code for data dictionary and through sc11 transaction code we are creating data elements and you all know in that data elements we have the field labels suppose if i will go for any data element suppose this is the data element in the data element we have the field label if we will use this data element we can simply use the field label and we can easily easily translate a field label into multiple languages so what is the first preferred way of the translation yes use the text which is defined in the data dictionary text defined in the data dictionary means we will simply simply use the data elements field labels now what is the second way of the translation use the text elements of the assistance class you all know in web time pro we are always always creating the assistance class so far we covered that whenever we want to write the selection logic we always always write the selection logic into the assistance class method when i covered the topic assistance class i told you at that point of time that we have another important benefit also and whenever we will proceed that will also be covered so what is the second most important benefit is we can simply simply use for the management of dynamic text we will simply simply use in the translation suppose simple example if i will go for the assistance class this is our assistance class in the assistance class we have a provision of text symbol and you all know we can easily easily translate a text symbol into multiple languages so what is the second way of the translation use the text symbols of the assistance class whenever you will use the text symbols of the assistance class it is very very easy to translate into multiple languages and what is the third way of the translation the third way of the translation is using otrs online text repository and whenever we will proceed we will go for three to four videos on otr topic itself one of the important topic of web time pro app so we can use otrs also we have a dedicated transaction code through that we will create the otrs so total we have three translation methods we will discuss first one text of data dictionary means data elements of data dictionary second using the text symbols of the assistance class and third with the help of otrs now we will simply simply start with the first way using the text which is defined in the data dictionary so what i will do i will simply simply create a web time pro component and we will go for single single label anyways we are not executing or we are not going for any logic yes we are simply covering that topic translation so we will go for small small one or two labels from that drop down yes web time pro component suppose i will say z sales demo on translation 
Suppose I will write underscore DDIC. DDIC means data dictionary. I will go for create. Yes, I want to create. Suppose I will write translation of sales order using DDIC. Yes, I will go for OK. I will save this as a local object. Now I will go for the view and I will create a label and input field. I will go to change mode. Now from the layout, I will simply choose matrix layout and I will create a label and input field. Insert element. Suppose I will write sales underscore LBN. And now this is our label. I will go for OK. Now, now previously we did the hard coding here. We provide sales document number. Now we will not do the hard coding, nothing. If we will hard code, then how we will translate? So we will not hard code the thing. But I will do. Now suppose I will simply create an input field. Insert element. Now I will write sales underscore in. This is our input field. Now we will bind this label with this input field. This is our label for this input field. I will go for save. I am not giving any text into one particular language. Now what I will do, I will go to component controller. I will simply right click on the context. I will create a node. Suppose name of the node is input. And I will take a attribute. Now suppose name of the attribute is VBELN. What is the data element? VBELN underscore VA. I will go for OK. Now I will go for the view. And I will drag and drop the node from the component controller context to the view context. Now I will simply go for context. Now I will drag and drop. Done. Now I will go for layout. Now you can see as of now, yes. We are not able to see the label because we have not given the label because now we, after that we created the input field. This label is for this input field. Now I will click on to this input field. Now I will bind. Now what is the name of the attribute? The name of the attribute. Suppose if I will go for this, the name of the attribute is VBELN. Now, if I will simply, simply go for save, have you seen sales document is automatically coming. Now, how, how it is coming? It is coming from that data element. We simply tell that this label is for this input field. This input field is binded to the attribute. Which attribute we binded? We binded to the attribute VBELN. Now this VBELN has a data element. What is the data element? VBELN underscore VA. And in this data element, we have the field label. So this label is coming from the data element itself. Now whenever the label is coming from the data element itself, can we translate that into multiple languages? Yes, we can easily, easily do that translation. Now, suppose as of now, people will say, suppose if I will go to VBELN underscore VA, suppose I will go for SC11 transaction code. Now, VBELN underscore VA. Now, you can see field label, sales document, sales document, sales doc, sales doc. Now, sales document is coming. Now, people will say, rather than sales document, I want this sales talk, but the short label is there. How I can do that? Simple. 
just go for the label. Now, simply, simply go for the text. We are not going for hard coding into one particular language. We are not going for hard coding. Just click here. Whenever you will click here, just see it is simply, simply showing you the VBELN underscore VA and which particular text is appearing, medium text. It means it is appearing. Suppose if you want to display the short text, just from this particular drop down, choose short text. This is our short text. I will go for OK. Now you can see it will be changed to sales talk. Have you seen it is changed to sales talk? So there is no need that we are hard coding into one particular language. This is a, a this label is coming from the data element. So we can easily, easily translate into multiple languages. Suppose I want to change this. Suppose if I will go for this, suppose I want to go for medium text only. I will go for OK. Now you can see it is coming from this. This is coming from the medium text of that particular data element. Now I will go for sale. Now I will simply activate. Suppose I will right click and I will do the activation. Now I will create a Web10 Pro application for this Web10 Pro component. Suppose I will simply, simply create a Web10 Pro application. Now suppose I will give suppose demo on translation of sales order number. I will go for OK. I will go for save. I will ignore this pop up. Now, whenever I will run this, I will go for test. I will go for allow. This is English language. I will log in into English language. And you can see this sales document is coming from data element. We have not done the hard coding into English language. Now, suppose customer team who is operating in Germany will run this same to same application. Now you can see, suppose if I will go for data element VBELN underscore VA, this is English language. Now, if I will go for German language, if I will go for translation and show you in German. Now, if I will go for OK, because this is original language is DE, target language is EN. Now, people will say why the original language is German. See, SAP is a German based product. SAP developed into German language and VBELN underscore VA. It is a SAP standard data element. It means SAP created in which language? German language. Yes. Now, if I will go for OK, you can see. OK, it is already locked. I'll just close that session. Now, if I will simply show you. You can see SAP has provided that text. This is the text into German. German, 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 and these are in English language, English language. Yes. So it is a standard data element because SAP is a German based product. So everything is available in German language also. If you are going for your own data element, then you need to provide that translation into that. Now it is translation is already there into German language. Now suppose if I will log in into German language. Suppose I will log in into German language. I'll just close and I will log in into German language. If you are going for your own data elements, yes, customer will provide that translation and we will put on into those data elements field labels. Now I, I logged in into German language and we will be able to see the labels into German language. I'll just wait. It might take some time for logging. 
sometimes it takes time to load the user data. Now I will go for same to same application. Now, if I will run this web Den pro application, I will go for test. I will go for allow. I will log in into German. Okay. Now you can see German, the text is coming into German language. If I will simply go for that data element, VBELN underscore VA. Now, if I will show you field label into German, okay. Now you can see we are getting this particular text, medium text. This particular medium text. This is our medium text. We are getting this particular text. Yes, this particular text. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, firstly, I told you that we have three translation methods into Web10 Pro app. We will use the text of data dictionary, means we will go for the data element field label. Second is we will go for text symbols of assistance class. Third is online text repository. So I explained the first way. We created a Web10 Pro component. And in that Web10 Pro component, I have not hard coded the text into English language. What I did, I simply, simply binded the label with this particular input field. Input field has a attribute. Attribute has a data element. So whatever is in the data element, it will appear there in the label because we told that this label is for this particular input field. Now, if you want to change the text, if you want to go for short, long, you can simply, simply change from here itself. And now, this is a SAP standard data element. SAP created this data element. It means SAP has also provided the translation for the same. And we saw that there is already a translation into German language. Do not confuse. SAP is a German-based product. SAP developed this into German. That's why we are able to see the original language German. After that, I logged in into the German language and I showed you that particular label is translated into German language. If you are going for your own data element, then you need to provide that translation into those field label and it will display. In the next video, we will simply, simply start with the next method that is text elements of assistance class. So that's it in this video. Thank you.